Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the Augmented Startup 1 framework. So we're going to see how we can use this framework for optic detection and optic tracking. This is a really nice and easy framework to work with. You basically just have to like clone it from the GitHub repository and then you can work with it. You can easily like import the YOLO models, the optic trackers, and then you can combine them. You can either run them on the video file, individual images, or live webcam streams with OpenCV. So I'm going to show you how we can install it on our own computer and how we can use the example programs. Then in other videos, we're going to see how we can use this framework here and also all the functionalities with both optic detection and optic tracking in our own custom Python script so we can create applications and projects for ourselves around this framework here because it's actually like really nice and easy to get started with and also use. Basically, when they come out with a new YOLO model, you can just swap it out with your previous one. You don't have to like do a lot of changes in your code and do a lot of modifications. You can basically just take the models and change them. Like you can basically just specify what model you want to use. If you want to use the YOLO v6, 7, 8, YOLO NAS and so on. You can also choose which of the optic trackers that you want to use. So you can both do optic detection and optic tracking with a couple of lines of code and you can also specify the parameters for the optic detection with intersection over union, the confidence score, classes that you want to track and detect and all those different kind of things. So let's not jump into it and see how we can install it on our own computer, talk about the framework, go over the GitHub repository and then see how we can run it on a video stream. So first of all, a huge shout out to Augmented Stars for creating this nice framework that is easy to use pretty much by everyone. So let's just going to take a look at it here. They all say the easy and modular computer vision detectors and trackers. We can run all these YOLO models. As you can see here, we both have the NAS, YOLO V8, YOLO V6, 7. Um, we also have 5RX in under 20 lines of code. So they're e really easy uh, to work with. And then again, when new YOLO models come out, they will also support those. So you can swap between the different kind of like YOLO models for optic detection and also when new trackers are coming out. But let's now take a look at the GitHub repository here. We can see that it already has like uh, 410 stars. So here we can see like the basic structure of it, which basically just going to scroll through it. Then I'm going to show you how we can set it up and use it in our own um, environment and in our own Python script. So AS1 is a modular library for YOLO optic detection and also for optic tracking. And again, if you're creating some really nice applications, you're doing optic detection in most situations, you actually like want to apply optic trackers on top of your optic detection, especially if you're not running real time, if you're running on like a recorded video or just individual images over time, and you don't want to have like a real time optic detection and optic tracking project running because it actually like takes up some time running optic tracking as well compared to just optic detection especially if you're, you're like using lower end hardware but like if you have the hardware if you have the time processing for it and you don't want to like run it like in real time or like 30 frames per second, you should definitely just like apply all the trackers on top of your optic. So the idea behind optic trackers is that we actually like want to track the optics over a number of frames. So we actually like take time into consideration and then we have some different parameters for that. So object detection, we just detect individual frames. If we do miss detections on individual frames, then we like like lose track of our object and we actually like want to keep track of it over time. And that's why we're using optic trackers to keep track of the state of our optics that we're tracking. So here we can see like table of context, like introduction, like prerequisites, clone the repo, like how we can install it both on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, how we can run the AS1 library here, some sample code snippets, and also the model suit down at the bottom. Um, so here we can read a bit about it, like for the introduction, they have some different kind of like optic trackers and optic trackers implemented. Uh, we have bite track, deep sword on Norfair. I have all of these trackers here on my uh, channel as well, like how you can implement them from scratch and even have a course about these trackers, like how they work under the hood, how they act like just are based on the Kalman filter, how we can implement Kalman filter in code and how we can use these trackers, how they work on a theoretical level. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. So here again, we can see that we can run these trackers with the different YOLO models. We can also see that the Python wrappers is also provides the YOLO models in ONNX, PyTorch, and Core ML. So if you want to like speed up your um, your your machine learning models, if you actually like want to deploy them into a system and also on edge hardware, uh, then it might be beneficial to actually like convert it to this ONNX format and run it in that way because it's actually like an optimized um, framework for doing inference and deploying deep learning and especially like the YOLO models. We also have PyTorch if you're testing out stuff and stuff like that. And also when we have it in the ONX format or in the PyTorch format, we can convert it to Tensor RT, speed it up, optimize it for NVIDIA GPUs and so on. So here we can just read a bit about it. We can also see the prerequisites. So again, if you have GPU uh, available on your computer, you can use that or else it will just automatically use the CPU. So make sure you have all those tools 
download it first of all. I have tutorials about that here on the channel, like how you can set that up. We also need the Microsoft Visual uh, Studio build tools here if you're using Windows, and we also need Git here for Windows so we can clone the repository. So right now we just need to go in and clone the repository. We can open up an Anaconda prompt and basically just do that. I have all of it set up on my computer already, so we can basically just clone it, but I already have it. So you'll just go in here. The only thing you have to do is just copy paste this one here, paste it into your terminal and then just um, hit enter and then it will download and clone the repository into your local uh, machine. Then when you have done that, we can just CD into the directory with the AS1 um, library. Then for the installation, we both have Linux, Windows, and also Mac OS. So right now I'm on a Windows computer. And then again, we basically just take each of these individual commands, throw them into our command prompt or into our terminal. Um, and then it will basically set up the whole framework. We don't have to do much. We just have to in pip install like NumPy, Scython. Uh, we have to set that up with, with Scython. We also have the ONNX runtime for the GPU, super gradients and stuff like that to actually like run the different YOLO models. And then we also need to install a torch here. If we have GPU available, you will have to install torch in another way. But again, you can just directly copy paste this or go into the PyTorch website. So this is actually like everything that we need. We just basically just have to run these commands in our command prompt or in our um, terminal and then it will set everything up and then we can directly use it with a few lines of code to be able to run object detection and object tracking. So we also have an example here of how we can run it. So we can just go in and test that in just a second inside of Microsoft Visual Studio Studio code. And then we can basically just test it on a sample video that they have provided. And then in another video, I'm going to show you how we can create object detection, object tracking. They also have OCR in this um, framework here, how we can use that in our own custom Python script for our own applications and projects. We can also run it here in Google Colab. If you want to do that, you can basically just hit it, hit open in Colab here. It will open up this Colab, uh, Colab notebook. You can run it through and then you can actually like, see how we can run this AS1 library and framework in Google Colab. Again, it is basically just the exact same things. It is just setting up the environment, creating a virtual screen, running AS1, you're using the exact same sample video here. So if you don't have a GPU available and you'll still be able to run that, you can go into Google Colab and use that instead. Or if you just prefer to use Google Colab over your own local machine. But let's just go back here again and then we can basically just go in and run this command from Microsoft Visual Studio. So I already have it up running here. I have the AS1. You can just open it up with Microsoft Visual Studio code after you have cloned the repository. Then we can just see all the files here. So first of all, we will have a main file, uh, which is the sample that we're going to run in just a second. It also has some files for YOLO v7, both on next model, ML model, and also the PyTorch model. Uh, we have some sources here, which is basically just for setting it up. We have the data. Uh, we have some sample images that you can try to run through some of the optic detection model and also optic trackers if you just want to play around with it. You can also open it up with your own webcam, as I'm going to show you in one of the coming upcoming videos. We also have these sample videos that we can throw through. Again, they can also do OCR, so like o easy OCR. And one of the benefits with this framework is that we can change the model like very easily. We can basically just specify like what type of model we want to use and also what type of tracker and then it will just run with a few lines of code. We also have the results here so we can see that after we have run some optic detection and optic tracking. And then we also have this AS1 here. We have some like demo for the detector, OCR. We can also do post estimation um, with this framework. We can do tracking and we can also do like the post estimation uh, down here at the bottom. Then we have some utils basically just like for setting everything up. We have the tracker so we have by track, deep sort, uh, modpy, norfair, OC source, strong source. So these are the most common used um, optic trackers out there. Again, I have these courses about like most of them in here, how you can implement it yourself and also the theory behind it. We have the post estimators with YOLO v7 and YOLO v8. We have the detectors, YOLO v5, 6, 7, 8, and then so on. Like every time a new YOLO model come out, they will support it and you can easily swap uh, the models out in your own applications. We're also going to create a video where we're going to train our own custom object detector and how we can use that custom trained object detector with this AS1 library. Okay, so let's now going to take a look at the main file before we're going to run it on um, an example video. So first of all, here again, we just have to like import AS1 from AM AS1. 
we have the main function here. We can filter the classes based on the arguments that we pass into the function. And then we basically just have to set up our detector. We call AS1. We set up the tracker. So in this one here, we're going to use byte track. And then we can also specify the detector. So again, you only need these two lines of code to be able to actually like set up um, the tracker and also the detector that you want to use. So this is way easier um, than doing it yourself. So again, we can just call like YOLO v7. We're going to use YOLO v7 and the PyTorch version in this example here. And then we're also going to use the byte tracker to track the optics around in the video that we're going to pass. Again, we specify the weights here from our arguments and also if we want to use CUDA if we have that available. We also set in the video path here to the video that we want to track the optics in. Um, we set up all the other, these other different kind of like parameters, both our opera directory, confidence threshold, intersection over union threshold, and so on. Also, if you want to draw the trails for our detected optics or like our tracked optics over a number of frames, but so then it will act like draw trails behind the optics when they're moving. Um, and then we can basically just loop like through like all the outputs here for each frame and basically just like visualize it. We can get the number of frames per seconds, the frame, the bounding boxes, the, the X, Y, X, Y coordinates for bounding boxes, the ID scores, class IDs, and so on. If you want to use these results in your own applications or projects, then all the results here are extracted and then you can basically just use it um, on your own. So let's just go down and actually like just run this program. First of all, we need to activate our environment here that we created when we basically just copy pasted all the commands into our command prompt while installing this framework. So again, we'll just activate our environment here before we're able to go in and run our example um, main file here. So first of all, we're just going to have run Python. So we have Python, we have our main file.py. So that will be main.py. And then we can go inside our data directory. And then inside of our data directory, let's just like take it here. We'll have our sample videos. And inside our sample videos, we have these different kind of th ones. As we have football, license play video, test video two. So let's go with the football one and see how that looks. Uh, so football one dot mp4. And now when I hit the command line here, I'll just move my camera a bit um, so you guys can see what's going on. So I'll just move it over here to the left. So right now we basically just specify the path. So we have main.py, we have the data that we want to pass into it. So this is the path to our video file. So data slash sample videos slash um, football dot mp4. Now we hit enter and now we act like going to first of all, like set up the whole model with both the tracker and the optic detector. And then it's going to run um, inference on this a video that is going to open up in just a second. And as we can see here, we get the video frame up running. We can see the optic detection. It is also tracking these objects over time. So we can see that even if it's running here, like we don't lose track of the persons uh, unless they are occluded. Uh, we can get around that with different kind of like optic textures, trackers, and so on. But again, again, we can see that this is actually like a pretty nice tracker. Let's just try one of the other ones here. So instead of the football, let's just try with the test video. So test.mp4. And then we're just going to run that and see what the results are in that scenario. So here we're just going to wait a second and then it's going to open up the video stream. So we saw that we got around like 15 frames per second. I'm running this on my 4090 um, GPU from NVIDIA. So this is actually like a pretty good GPU and we're still only able to run like 15, uh, 16 frames per second. But again, if we convert to own next, for example, use an optimized framework, we could convert it to tensor RT um, as well. I might create some videos about that, how we can take these YOLO models, convert them into own NX and also tensor RT and how we can speed up the inference and optimize these models um, to run better in your own applications and projects when we're actually like going to deploy and do inference in real life um, applications. Because if you're running these like PyTorch uh, models, they act like pretty slow, as you can see here. Um, it is also because we're running these trackers on top of the optic detection models. If you're only running the optic detection, it will be significantly faster, but it will act like slow it down a lot by using these trackers on top of it. So that was also what I mentioned in the start. If you don't need like real time optic detection, you can also just apply trackers on top of it, especially with this framework here, where you basically just have to like specify um, a single parameter and then it will both do optic detection and optic tracking. So this is a pretty awesome framework that we're going to use in the upcoming videos here on the channel. We're both going to create videos about like how we can use these in our own custom script, how we can extract information. We already saw like how the information is extracted, how can we use that in our own application and projects. We're also going to see how we can set it up by ourselves, how we can use optic trackers, optic detectors. We're going to compare some of the optic detectors and trackers, both the YOLO models, but also the different optic trackers that we have. We're going to do some comparisons, see how fast they actually like run and what works best for different situations and projects. 
So some really cool videos coming up and definitely hit the subscribe button under the video here. So I hope to see you in one of those videos, guys. Bye for now.